Hey guys, Martin Motorsports and Co. here, coming out with you with another episode of the Rav4 build here. Uh, it's just me today, no Jody. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to lift the engine and transmission and case out from the cradle there, so I can pressure wash the cradle and make it look all nice before it goes back in. Um, just kind of want to do a quick, quick view here of what you're going to be looking at if you do take your engine out, cradle and all. Um, first things first... You're going to want to undo your front motor mount here. It's actually on the transmission, and like I've, we've been talking about, mine is uh, an automatic, so it's going to look like this here with all those wires and trans cooler lines hanging around. Uh, there's one bolt that comes right here, and it's got a nut on the end of it. They're both a 17 millimeter, so get a wrench and your favorite impact and go to town on it. Mine, uh, despite having near a quarter of a million miles on it, was not that tight, so I only had to do one small burst of the... Milwaukee quarter inch uh, impact driver. Then, if you're going to lift it out of the cradle, you are going to have to disconnect your sway bar. The brackets are right there. They're held in by two 12 millimeter bolts a piece there, so four total. Um, and then you are going to have to take your steering rack out. So that's what I'm working on right now is undoing the tie rod ends there, and then I'm going to lift the rack out and I think I'm going to try and lift it with all the lines and everything still attached so I don't, hopefully don't lose a, uh, a drop of power steering fluid. Not that it really matters, I'm going to be changing it anyway, but I just don't like a mess. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. If I can shut the video off, this is just the fun things of working with a phone and having gloves on. <laughs> okay, so we've got our steering rack and everything pushed to the side for right now. So, if you look down here, this is where the, it mounts. There is going to be a little clip here that goes on. Oh, there we go. Like such. So, you want to save that because that's like an encapsulated nut there. Um, you are going to have two long, same thing, 17 millimeter bolts, just like your tie rod ends, that go into that. So, save those. Now we can gain access to our rear mount there, which should be the only thing holding this thing in. You know, knock on wood, of course, I haven't gone through this yet, but we'll see. So stay tuned, let's see what we have, what happens. Okay, so, we got the sway bar unmounted, like I said, and we got this guy disconnected. One little helpful hip hint there. If you look at the, uh, the um, steering rack mount, right here you'll notice there's no hole in it but if you go to the other side there's a nice little hole right there and if you get a you know nice extension here you can actually take your extension and get it right in there and that makes it super easy to take that uh, bolt out there and that guy is this shouldered bolt right here as you can see pretty long guy and there is a, an encapsulated nut built into the mount, so we don't have to worry about trying to keep track of that. So now, the next step is to lift uh, lift everything out of the cradle. Um, make sure your axles are disconnected. That side, unfortunately, split the boot open, so looks like I'm buying a new passenger side axle. And who am I kidding? I'll probably end up just doing both, just because these are the OEM axles with 244,000 miles on them. So we uh, will get going. Alrighty, so we got the engine lifted out of the cradle. So as you can see, there's your two forward and backward mounts there. Uh, I'm still leaving mine all, my struts and everything all hooked up, uh, just so I can get everything clean before I start really disassembling there. But, uh, like I said, this is your one back here. Both of these are actually pretty similar in style. They're both going to have a just a single bolt, and then the mount on the engine side, or I guess on this in this case the transmission side, will have an encapsulated nut that will uh, hold everything in place there. But I used a cherry picker to, to get everything pulled out there and a couple jack stands to set everything up. So that part is ready to be cleaned up and painted uh, before the 3S GTE goes in. I'm going to pan over to the engine here next and show you a little bit, uh, a little bit more things on that. <laughs> 